Teach your stuff. Okay. Okay, you're on spring break this week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're still teaching. Yeah. So you you haven't retired. You haven't, you haven't quit and you haven't gone someplace else. Why not? Uh, you've thought about it. Yes, I've yeah. thought about it. And uh, I'm thinking even more about it now. So um, I'm seriously in uh, in a place where I feel like maybe a transition is in my future. So mm -hmm. I'm uh, job hunting. I'm, I'm working on my resume. I'm looking at all my options with uh, the amount of time that I have in. So um, I'm really considering uh, what the next step is for me. You've been a teacher for how many years in Berkeley County? In Berkeley, uh, this is my 22nd. 22nd. And I did four in Maryland before that. And what's prompting this new look, this hard look about a transition? Um, I mean, there's so many things. And I think there's a lot of things that teachers and staff in Berkeley County have endured for a long period of time. And we've thought, you know, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. And there's some things that have gotten better and then some things that just continue to get worse or hit us from a different angle. So... Um, for me, it's just um, exhaustion and knowing that uh, some things that are really causing issues for me now um, will not get better, and they're going to get Such worse. Such as? Um, it's the staffing issue for me. It's, it's Too few teachers? Too few uh, people um, in the buildings, too few subs. When you uh, do need a day off, you are pretty sure you're not going to find someone. Um, even a couple of times when I had appointments or doctor's appointments this year, I had a sub and then the sub canceled at the last minute. So when that happens, the staff has to pick up the slack and you feel guilty, you know, as a staff member, um, taking your time when you know you need it, but um, you know you're putting it on others. Um, it used to be years ago, I would cover um, all my planning time maybe twice a year. Um, what, what does that mean, Julie? That means uh, when I have a planning period, which is for me prep time, um, I unload my kilns, grade papers, return parent phone calls, whatever it is I need to do during the school day, um, that time is gone because now I have to cover another class. And is it another class that you are trained for on how to teach it? No, because <laughs> I, um, I mean, I'm certified art, so there is no other art teacher in the building, so I'm filling in for math, social studies, a different grade, you know, special ed. And what, what do you do in those classes if you're not trained to teach them? Are you educated enough to get by? In, what grades are we talking about first and foremost? Well, I teach middle school, so I okay. teach uh, anyone from, from, say, 11 to 14. Okay, so if you have to go and cover a 12-year-old's math class, can you get by out of the math book with, without having a math degree? I mean, the teacher, you know, I would leave plans, and, and so would the other teacher, you know. So there are plans there. It's just that... Um, but if a know. kid says to you, I don't understand how to do this problem, can you... Are you far enough along in math that you can, uh, for the uh, 12 or 13 year olds class, that you can hit, help them? Most of the time. Most of the time. I mean, sometimes it's just like my son, who's an eighth grader, when he comes home and he has homework, and I'm like, oh, give me a few seconds here to think yeah. about this. Because so. when my kids got to like sixth or seventh grade, I could no longer help them with their math. Yeah. I mean, I, I try. My son's in, um, he's in the honors, so he's algebra. He's, he's taking algebra this year. So. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I try and I look at the problem and I look at any um, resources that might be available to me, but we're filling in all the time. And that's mm -hmm. um, since January, I would say there's only been one day I haven't been asked to cover. Yeah. So Rob, it's every day. Rob, you mentioned sixth or seventh grade for your son. I'm surprised it wasn't the second or third grade. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing me as you know me. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Uh, uh, Julie, I want to come back to a subject, uh, PEA, in a minute. But you mentioned uh, taking call from the parents. One of the continuing themes that we've had uh, uh, for the last couple of so years is the involvement of the parents. And uh, I get the impression that the parents are not as engaged as what we'd like for them to be, especially during parent-teacher association meetings. How many calls do you get during a given week from parents? Um, well, I think for art, I don't receive that many. Yeah. How about um, the other? But other once ones? the marking period ends, that's when you sometimes hear from a parent because okay. then they're not happy with the score that a student got or they're, happy, dis, you know, they're not happy with something that occurred. Um, the other issue is if there is a discipline problem throughout the week, 
Um, and if I would have to remove a student from a class, then within, say, 24 hours, I'm supposed to contact the parent. So okay. those are the types of things that if you have an issue uh, during the week, you need to make sure that you're timely, you know, getting into contact with those parents. So that's probably where it just depends on the week. Um, that's where I would probably be answering most of my phone calls. It's okay. not as much about grades for me yeah. um, in art as it is for, you know, if there's a discipline issue or something that is alarming. And maybe there's a student I've had. Um, uh, multiple issues with and so I want to contact the parent before I have to remove them from the yeah. classroom okay. but that time is given up so if if I don't have that time it's a lot harder to make those parent contacts uh, during this session you and I talked a couple of occasions uh, and at the time you were somewhat distressed with the direction the PEIA discussion was going uh, that was kind of the early stage now that everything has been enacted it's been signed by the uh, by the governor are you any more relaxed any more happy than what you were before or are you still somewhat disturbed um, I would say that PIA is definitely one of the reasons why I'm also considering a, a new career I'm gonna have to look at um, what it's gonna cost my family I don't think with the raise um, with the raise in the insurance and with the spousal, um, I guess, penalty, that it's probably going to work in my favor. I think either way, um, my family is going to be making less money as a family um, because of the PEI changes. So um, I have to weigh those, those costs. I mean, it's not just about me. It's about my family's income. So mm -hmm. if I pay the penalty for my spouse, um, it's going to cost us you know, at least $1,700. Um, extra that they haven't told me exactly what my 26% is going to be also that I'm increasing on PEIA so we're going to be looking at what my husband's um, insurance is going to be either way I think we're looking at you know as an as a family our income is going down you say spouse of penalty you're talking about the insurance that you'd have to pick up the insurance at $147 yes uh, a month okay yes and uh, the uh, I we hear from the legislators said that with the 22% uh, increase and I think you got what 23 2400 uh, dollar increase as well uh, uh, those that would offset any any penalty that you had from the premium increase and the spousal insurance you're saying that's not the case well, I, I have to find out for sure. Um, I do know that the spousal penalty is going to be about $1,700 mm -hmm. plus change. Um, so you have to deduct from the 2300 that uh, right away. And then I have to see how much the, it's, it's about 26%. Mine's supposed to be going up um, for family coverage. So for me to still cover my children, I'm definitely going up 26%. Plus I get a step increase for being, you know, a 23 year employee versus, you know, a 22 year employee. So, um, I'm not sure that I'm going to make any money at all. I think, I think as a family, our, our income monthly is probably going down. Yes. How long have you worked for the uh, education system as a teacher? Uh, 26. 26 and years. What is retirement? What's full retirement? Um, I need to get to uh, 30 or f 30 and 55. So So I gather what you're saying, you're prepared to give away the, the retirement because of your frustration with the, the staffing issues and the, uh, the, uh, the financial penalty you're getting from PEIA. Uh, I'm willing to look at that this summer. I'm, I'm thinking about it because um, I have I have retirement. I'm in um, the other system. I don't know what they call it, but mine's more like the 401k. So I was vested after 12 years, and a lot of teachers um, got out of that system and bought back into the state system. Um, I did not um, because I wasn't sure if I could make it to 30. Um, and that's where I'm at now. So I think what I'd be giving up is probably the health insurance. Um, I'm not sure what other things I would lose um, if I left early. And I have talked to several teachers, uh, mentors, and people who've retired. And, and there are people who've said, you know, it's only four more years. You know, can't you just stick it out? Um, I think that, you know, maybe if I found, I'll be, I'll be looking at job postings. I've looked at uh, other state jobs because there's plenty of state jobs that are open also. 
Um, I've looked at, you know, colleges. I've looked at a lot of things that I might be qualified for. So if there's maybe another avenue for me to finish out the four years, I might consider that. <laughs> but um, personally, uh, a lot has happened to me in four years. Um, a lot has happened to the school system in four years. And I'm just not prepared to sacrifice four years of um, my livelihood, four years of my, you know, mental health. Um, physical health. I need more work-life balance, and so I'm I'm going to be looking at that. I I would rather take I think less pay and have less stress in my life, um, and have more physical and mental um, health and balance with my family. So those are all the things I'm going to be looking at and weighing this summer and and kind of looking at what my options are. So that kind of circles back to what you said earlier. The staffing is a big issue for you, more so than the the pay side. I think that's the thing that um, many teachers I talk to and, and administrators, uh, we are very, very concerned about the staffing issue. And I think- Is if, that a matter of funding or a matter of applications? Um, okay. I think it's a matter of probably pay in the Eastern Panhandle. So there are um, open positions that are not being filled? Is that the source of the staffing? Yes, I mean, I, that is one thing that I just prepared for you guys in case you wanted to see, because right now f we post jobs for two weeks, right? And so they're open and people can apply. And right now we have the job openings out there for say next year, we're hiring for next year. The jobs that are posted are the ones that are in like say long-term jobs right now. Like, so if I have a math teacher in my building who's not certified and she's a long-term sub or a perm sub, uh, that job is gonna be posted because we're going to try and get an applicant who is certified first and then come summertime if those jobs aren't filled then we'll start looking at our perm sub situation so for this two weeks we have um 289 professional positions open in berkeley county in out of, berkeley county out of, uh, out of how many well I, I don't know there's just 289 positions that people can now apply for for next year in the schools Yes, in Berkeley County. How many t is this uh, teachers or staffers or? Uh, um, it's cafeteria? teachers. It's mostly teachers, okay. and um, also I looked at like counselors. There's a, a eleven counselor positions open right mm -hmm. now that you could apply for. Um, there's twenty math jobs, so twenty okay. math positions that are not you know that are open already for next year. Um, there are thirty two elementary jobs. So how many elementary schools are there? Uh, I want to. I, I I honestly can't remember. Okay, how many teachers do we have in Berkeley County? I, I'm not positive. I thought we were around three thousand okay. um, employees. I'm trying. So. To, oh, employees. I'm, yeah. What I'm trying to do, Julie, is get a uh, percentage. Well, there's some BOE uh, members listening. So if any of you folks yeah. who are BOE members listening yeah. know the answers, post them. I know with the correction system, uh, we see around forty percent vacancy. And I, I suspect it's not that high with the education system, but I'd be curious to see what percent of our staff, be they teachers or support staff, are actually vacant. If we're talking about 10 to 15 percent, that's an alarming number. Well, I think another alarming number is uh, the jobs that are the hardest to fill. Yeah. Um, and, and that's going to be special ed. And we have 102 special ed jobs open. 102 for next year 102. and that's just for, Jackie long that's for this two weeks answer the teacher question she said there's about 1300 teachers oh you said 289 are posted now so wow <clears throat> and for and for um, the people in the buildings who understand those numbers that's that's extremely alarming because I already know about jobs that aren't even posted yet you know jobs that either somebody has resigned from or somebody is going to resign from um, those are just the job postings for two weeks. Sometimes jobs aren't posted because, say, a principal's not going to be around to interview. Mm -hmm. um, I think the job postings for two weeks should go down today, and then we get new job postings um, tomorrow. It's usually Tuesdays. So there may be some that close just so principals can uh, do some interviews in the next two weeks, but then there's going to be new jobs that are posted. So I've looked at what's on there. It's like six pages worth of jobs. Um, I'll be looking um, tomorrow to see if there's more jobs and, and another job that I might be interested in. A snapshot right now, if my math's right, something like 23% mm -hmm. vacancy. Of just for this teachers. two weeks, yeah. yeah. For this, for this yeah. two weeks. Yeah. You've been a teacher in the Berkeley County School System 22 years. Yes. What is your salary? Um, I'm right about 60. 60. Does that include the extra money you get from working extra hours for your uh, planning time and 
covering other duties? No, that does not. Um, what it does include is the fact that I have a master's degree plus 30. So I have 30 additional credit hours. So someone who has a master's degree or somebody who's been in 22 years and only has a bachelor's is going to be making, you know, lower than that. Okay. So you're around 60, you'll get a $2,300 raise and you've not yet been able to do the math as to how much of that gets netted out because of PEIA. Yeah, we're, we received an email saying we should be getting information soon, but, um, you know, open enrollment for us is April. So um, I need to know some things by the end of April so that I can start looking at what my options are. You got an email from who? You're talking about getting information to get to know more about PEIA? Um, from our from central office because it's at open enrollment time. So it's time it's time that we would make changes to our benefits. Okay. So I, um, I know that this year we are going to have to you know fill out an affidavit for our spouse if we keep them on. Um, so there's there's things that are that change in April because we're shopping around for our benefits or not. Um, if I decide to just go on my husband's insurance, you know, now's the time that I would decide that. So those are the decisions I have to make in April. So we're supposed to be getting some kind of information coming soon about the, how the 26%, I think, is going to affect me. And you say the 26%, are you talking about a 26% pr projected increase in premium? Yes. Okay. But, but Regardless I understand, of the spouse. I'm, I'm told that's the average, but that doesn't apply to everybody. So it's, it's, I'm told that that number doesn't necessarily mean you personally will get a 26% increase. That's you may, possible, you may, you, you yeah, may not. Yeah, I think I have to weigh that first. <laughs> I have right. to think about, you know, and hopefully that I'm going to get a better projection for how much that is going to be for me. What are your current monthly premiums with PEIA? Any idea? Uh, it's been a while since I looked. So um, I, I'm. those are all the things that I'm going to be weighing. I need to look at the fine-tuned numbers between my husband and me and um, how much it's going up and what it's going to be. John. Is the shortage of teachers a, a national thing? Uh, yes. The, mm. So it's not just Berkeley mm. County? That is, or it is not just West Virginia that is having a teacher yeah. shortage. It is, it is a national thing. But um, you know, when you look at here, like I just started dabbling in uh, March when I maybe had talked to Bill, and I was frustrated over PIA. I was frustrated about um, the internet situation, and really just at the end of my rope at that point, um, I just started like putting out my you know information or just looking at LinkedIn, Monster, um, you know, all the job sites and that was without putting out my credentials or putting out you know a resume just to see what's out there so there's a lot of like low paying jobs but they're all, they're not that low paying compared to teaching mm -hmm. let me go back to the internet very quickly you uh at that time you were frustrated because you had to do a lot of your posting your grades at home because there was no hot spots available for you in the school system if there was a single hot spot then you're sharing it with all the other teachers so that required you go home over the weekends to do a lot of this necessary posting has the internet problem been fixed um, it's getting better, but it's not fixed. And I will say I'm, I'm very, I personally am very concerned about testing this year because the kids, um, aren't 100% using their Chromebooks again. Um, so I'm not sure how testing is going to go. A lot of kids have Chromebooks that have been broken since this went out in, uh, I think it was February 3rd. Um, so I'm not sure how that's all going to go. Uh, it's definitely, that's part of the main problem is just the, the amount of work that I'm expected to do on my own time, um, outside of the classroom. If I work two or three jobs, which I'm used to doing, I, I used to work two or three jobs prior to having children, um, including the teaching job. And so I'm a hard worker, so I'm not worried about that, but I would rather get paid overtime. Um, at two or three jobs and end up making more money and still not have the stress that I have um, or be able to know that when I leave work, my time is my time with my family and it's not something that I'm going to have to do. Right now, I, I do things like I have an art club, I, have, I teach clay, and these are things that if I can't get the prep work done during the day, I have to go in on the weekends. 
Um, so I go in on the weekends regularly when I'm teaching uh, things like ceramics. So either I have to cut these types of things out of my life because I've, I've tried to cut back. Um, I even told Mike Height, I took some of his advice. He said, I'd rather, you know, people cut back or do less and then not get burned out. I definitely tried to do that this year. I tried to make some changes so that I knew that I was going to have to cover on my planning more. I thought I would cut back here and there, and it's just not helping. It's, it's just getting worse. So if I'm continuously doing more and more and more and more on my own time, going in on weekends, then it's just it's time for me to look for more balance. There's a lot of trauma in the schools, um, but I think teachers have also received and staff have had a lot, a lot of, of trauma. Trauma. What, what do you mean by trauma? Kids have been through a lot of trauma since since COVID. And, um, you know, that shows up in a lot of ways. And we're trying to do things like trauma informed training so that teachers are more aware of when kids have outbursts and things like that, you know, that this is their trauma coming out. But, you know, there's only so much that people can be expected to absorb in terms of trauma when when we ourselves are traumatized over the last four years, you know, things that we've been through. Um, and then you just constantly have to just accept the trauma that you're receiving from kids yeah. because the, of what they're going through it's just it's a lot it's a lot to put on on your staff and mm -hmm. it's only so long before that affects them mentally and yeah. so i need i need a little more balance i think jackie long says the internet has been fixed uh the internet problem has been fixed uh has it been julie i caught you in mid gulp there <laughs> <laughs> i would not say it's back up to where it was for me anyway Okay. Are the other teachers... I think you're being polite. Yeah. <laughs> I assume you're not alone. Uh, or is this the majority of the teachers still uh, feeling the same level of frustration you are? I mean, a lot of the people that I talk to, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Are you guys And that's what's out? worrisome. Are you fried? I am. I am a little bit, yeah. Um, that's why I'm like, maybe it's, I need to find another position. Um, and it's, it's a shame. I love my coworkers. I love my, my administration in my building right now is the best administration I've ever had working together as a team. Um, I love the building that I have, like the, the program, you know, I used to fight over like getting funding. Now I have funding for my program. Um, I've worked my way up to where I have supplies that I need, but I just, I just can't keep doing this. It's it's always something that is worse, something that hits you from the wrong angle, you know, and you just can't keep going home depleted. I talk to people who go home and immediately they need to take a nap after school because they are so mentally drained from all the decision making, problem solving, it's overload. And and if you have to constantly recharge in that way um, before you can even even, you know, enjoy your family it's it's tough you know i'm ready to have more family time john is covid the tipping point i mean life is going to be divided before and after covid is that kind of when things went bad was that the beginning of the bad times you said it's gotten a lot worse than it used to be uh covid was definitely a huge catalyst um especially for middle school kids uh some of the behaviors some of the things that we're seeing the problems in the schools the discipline um, it's Is it socialization issues, the, living in isolation for two years the, and trying to get back with kids? or is um, it, Some well, of it is that. I think some of it is um, parents disengaged, um, whether it's because they were working and kids were at home unsupervised. Um, they just didn't know what was going on with their kids, what they were looking at, what they're watching, what they're doing. Uh, there's, there's a lot of severe behaviors uh, coming out of the kids these days. And if, you know, I was looking at, well, when would I wait to see a group of kids that, you know, hasn't been dealing with this? I mean, that's like this year's kindergartners. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait eight more years to see a group of kids that haven't been through COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's tough. Um, the things that the police have been, work, you know, involved with for security, you know, I, we need more of that. I think it's been better this year. You know, I've seen uh, the sheriff's department brought the drug dogs in the buildings. I wish we could see them like more than once a year. Um, just to the, sniff out drugs or to educate the kids on to, to look for drugs. Yeah. In the middle school. Yes. Yes. And do you find that kids are there's more, you say, acting out. Are we talking about violence, either capital V or lowercase v, among the kids? Is that, that the kind of acting out? 
And the, versus the teachers. Violence, yes. Okay. Um, uh, talking back, shouting, disrupting, you know, cussing, you know, just exploding. Uh, it's explosive behaviors. Um, and then on top of it, the kids that are vaping. It's just they have no idea how dangerous the vaping is. And it's like a game they play with us where they're trying to hide it go to the bathrooms, you know, switch it off. You know, they think that we're idiots, that we haven't been dealing with, you know, teenagers for 25 years. So it's always like, it's almost like a shell game. They're almost, they're always trying to outsmart the adults. And, you know, there's a lot of times where they do, but it's like, I spend a lot of energy mm -hmm. with that kind of thing instead of just trying to educate kids. And I think that's where a lot of Educators who've been in the field as long as I have, you know, they're just looking for, you know, relief. Like, can we just get back to educating? It's going to be a long time before we can just get back to educating. And you can see that we need we need counselors. We, we, we need social workers. We need, uh, you know, more presence with the police. We need support for the discipline. I am hopeful that the discipline, uh, the, the law that was changed with the discipline, that is the one law that I am hopeful is going to help where we can start disciplining the way we need to, regardless of accommodations or things like that. Because one of the disservices I've always felt in middle school that we do to kids is we accommodate, we accommodate, we, we excuse, we, we you know give them support. But at some point they turn 18. And, and no one is going to accommodate them. No one is, they need to know what the consequences are going to be when they start making decisions that are adult decisions as a child. Uh, that discipline bill, by the way, was HB 2890. I got a text from Mike Hornby uh, about that. And uh, you should know that Dylan Bishop, our producer, subbed for you. Yes, the way, he did. Oh, that's who. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. That was Dylan. I hope he had an enjoyable afternoon. It was, <laughs> yeah, it was a doctor's appointment I had to take off for my son. And uh, I really didn't think I was going to get a sub. I had put it in earlier in the week, even though it was a sick day, just yeah. because we, it was an appointment. We went out without news that day, but that's fine. As long as you can <laughs> take your son to the doctor, you know, whatever. He did whatever. a great job. I, he seemed to have a good day. Yeah. So, <laughs> now, from, Hey, from the classroom to the newsroom, Dylan Bishop does it all. Julie, good to see you again. Good to see you, Rob. And uh, I wish you the best going forward here. Whatever.